Tēnā koutou katoa. Um, ko Cecile de Glenn toko ingoa. Um, I am um, speaking to you here about attributes of resilient pasture for achieving environmental outcomes. And before I start, I obviously want to thank the organising committee for the invitation to come and speak to you, but also would like to acknowledge um, my co-authors from Angersfjord, Waikato University and Darien Z. Um, this was truly a team effort. So the brief we got for our paper was to address the question, if we have resilient pastures, what does that then mean for our ability to manage environmental losses? And when we looked at that question as a team, we went like, actually, that question implies that uh, environmental losses are a, um, or are improving our ability to manage those losses is a happy or perhaps unhappy co coincidence of resilient pastures. So we didn't think that was quite right. So we actually adopted another definition that includes environmental impacts as a key integral part of pasture resilience, rather than just viewing them as co-benefits. And the losses we looked at is nutrient so and soil loss, greenhouse gases, and soil carbon changes. And what we did was to really review what we knew about those losses, what were drive effectors of those losses and uh, changes in soil carbon, and then uh, summarize what does that then mean in terms of key attributes for pasture resilience. So let's look at nutrient losses for it, uh, first. This is really quite a complex array of, of um, sources and flow pathways of loss. Uh, going from nitrogen hotspots such as urine patches, which we all know are the key uh, hotspots for nitrogen loss in New Zealand pastures, to landscape features such as slopes for soil loss and uh, phosphorus critical source area losses. But for the purpose of this talk, we're really going to hone into what it means for pastures and pasture resilience. So when we looked at all this, the key attributes that we think could help um, resilient pasture in terms of minimizing nutrient and soil loss are first of all maintaining pasture cover. It's a bit of a no-brainer, good pasture cover, good root biomass, it will hold on to soil, it will increase our ability to uh, take up nutrients and therefore min ex minimize excess nitrogen and phosphorus in the soil. It also helps us reduce the susceptibility to flooding and drought at the same time and it would also reduce the need for renewal, which we all know is also a big um, uh, contributor to uh, nitrogen excess or risk for nitrogen losses and carbon losses as well. So the, other, the other two elements that we looked at, we're looking at the synchronization of demand and supply. And that sounds very, hmm, uh, because we think, perhaps immediately thinking on fertilizer application, but that's not necessarily what we're thinking about here, which I'll come to in a little bit later. But it's really about maximizing the nutrient uptake capacity of that pasture to avoid those excess NMP that can be lost. From a management perspective, pastures that are uh, able to minimize the hugging and compaction, and it's not the species themselves, but also the way the, man the pastures are managed, um, will help uh, maintain the soil structure and thus the ability of the soil to exchange the, the air and water that is required for good environmental management as well. So the second um, environmental impact we looked at was greenhouse gases and, and we're focused here on methane and nitrous oxide emissions from pastoral systems. And the key message here really is that at the moment, without having any methane reduction technologies, the key driver of um, methane emissions, enteric methane emissions, is the total amount of feed eaten by the herd or by the flock. And that's because for fresh foragers, the methane yield or the, the amount of methane produced per kilogram of dry matter is very stable, very similar. So methane or uh, dry matter eaten obviously also affects um, nitrous oxide emissions and that's really driven by the nitrogen content of that pasture. The higher that is, the more nitrogen is accreted in the urine patches and they are again the biggest source of nitrous oxide emissions. So two key elements of pasture there. The other side of the equation of course is pasture eaten is also what we're trying to achieve to increase our productivity and our animal production. 
So, and that's very much driven by the amide or energy content of that pasture. So there is, there is potentially a tension there. Come back to that again in a minute. Finally, the last, uh, the other element we looked at was soil carbon inputs and outputs. Obviously, pasture has got an important point, uh, important factor in it as well, because it's a balance between anything that comes in through the uh, photosynthesis or what is respired by the pasture or by soil, for that matter. So it's the balance between those two. Key point also is that Louis told me is that soil stabilization is also important there because if we didn't have those microbes stabilizing that carbon that comes in, it would be immediately going out again. Did I get it right? Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so um, there are many factors that affect um, both photosynthesis and, and respiration and the balance between the two, and they are also affected by pasture in the soil. So when it comes to looking at what are then the key attributes for um, resilient pasture in terms of soil carbon, again, it's around maintaining pasture cover. And by maintaining a pasture cover, maintaining a, a good growing root biomass, which will increase the root uh, carbon inputs. So around pasture persistence, so avoiding that you have to renew it again, and which reduces the soil carbon loss. And again, it's about minimizing packing and compaction to maintain that soil integrity and you avoid your losses there and your soil respiration. Sound all familiar? Well, that's where our second key message for this talk comes in, that we found that many of the attributes that each individually of us came up with actually have multiple benefits. And th these ones is the key that we, um, that we think are the main ones. Again, maintaining actively growing cover will have a beneficial impact on all the environmental impact, as well as on production, of course. Particularly if you do that through uh, maintaining your desired species. And that um, from a farm, farm systems perspective, of course, you want to maintain the, the species you paid for that you sowed in the first place. And um, so that's thanks, Maureen, uh, a key important factor there. The other attribute is around looking at low nitrogen species, um, because that will help reduce our excess nitrogen, uh, urinary nitrogen in the system and all species that have what they call a biological nitrification inhibition capacity. Not sure if many of you have heard about this, but this, there are some species, particularly tropical species, we know that have that capacity. And there is evidence emerging that plantain, for instance, may at occasion also have this capacity. More work to be done there. The other point there is really a right complementarity of species that, that will um, co occupy different niches both sp spatial and temporal, so complementarity root morphology to capture as much of the soil and the nitrogen that's in the system and the phosphorus, or species that follow each other in the season and have different growing, active growing in different seasons. So what I said before, there was a tension between potentially methane and productivity, and the total, uh, to reduce methane emissions is reduce the total dry matter eaten but that will potentially have an effect on uh, production, unless you can achieve that using high quality or higher quality pasture. So in this key message here is when it comes uh, to considering pasture for reducing methane emissions, it's really focusing on quality over quantity going into the animal. So just in summary, it is really reinforcing the, the messages I've been giving throughout the talk. We feel that pasture, the, the definition of pasture resilience should include environmental impacts. Um, the key attributes we think are important is the growing cover, high energy, low end species, and uh, diversity occupy different spe uh, niches that are important. Quality over quantity for methane reduction, and that can be either be done by different species or through uh, uh, grazing management to increase that. And then the final point is really that we want to highlight is that attributes by themselves are not really likely to make major improvements, but that, uh, that we will probably have to have a range of these to achieve the things we want to achieve. Thank you very much. <laughs>